Rhonda Rose says, hi, Carrie. Oh, was she in today? Yeah, well, no, we went for lunch for her birthday. Oh, nice. So she's, she's such, a, she's a sweetheart. Isn't she? She's a year younger yeah. than me. Casey, hello. Bye. Okay, do we have everybody's attention? No. <laughs> Can we get everybody's attention? Okay. Bring all the cats into the room. <laughs> Throw the cat toys down. Make sure there's something to play with. Don't you mean the wild cats? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you got nice high ceilings there. Hmm. What? Lori has nice high ceilings. High ceilings. I know. I like high ceilings. You know, I'm six foot six, eh? So I'm. All the space. Are you really? Yeah. What What do you think? I'm six foot he's six. Foot, oh. He's a whole foot taller than me. <laughs> okay. Shall we bring the meeting to order? Yes. Yeah. Beat the gavel. And uh, a little quick check in. Can everyone kind of go and say how you are and what's up? Actually, no. Check in with your biggest learning of the week in relationship to any values or maps or something with the new paradigm toolkit. I had a big one this week. So there was a bit of um, a potential kind of conflict or thing that came up this week. And so when we were sitting around the table, because we were doing an evening session, and so I posed the question in the flow. That's yellow, right? Flow? Yeah. Um, just how can I approach conflict so everyone feels like there's a positive resolution? And so cards that I flipped up and stuff, and what really, and it was all about help advocating. It was like advocating what were the other ones? There were, I took a picture, there are a few others, but it was almost like I got this aha moment of taking myself out of it because often when there's a conflict, it's a person's response that it brings up something in them. And so just being, to view those, those op as opportunities to help the other person get healing because healing was my other card that came up. So just taking it from the perspective of almost like you're seeing it from a third party above. And so removing yourself and your feelings, owning your part in it. And that was a huge learning for me. It was like an aha moment. Awesome. Yeah. Carrie? Yeah, well, mine was a little bit related to what Christy was saying because Elijah and I on Monday did a little questioning and used some values cards and about a conflict in my own personal life and a lot of emotion with that. And now kind of looking at taking a few days to process what those cards mean and how I can use them in the conversation coming forward. But interesting to note the cards that came up as values. Of course, I checked in with um, my aunt who's very spiritual person and her message to me without knowing the cards that I picked was the exact resonance of what the three cards were that Elijah gave me. Seriously. So one of the cards he talked about was inclusion and I didn't quite understand what that meant in this conflict. And then, like I said, a couple days processing and then what she said, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's what that means. And that value, why it's so difficult for this person to use his brain. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. So, you haven't had the chat yet. <laughs> Could you tell that, Elijah? <laughs> well, we, the story usually has a little bit of and then. <laughs> and then, yeah, the chat is coming. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Uh, oh, and mine, you guys, I guess it was getting past and get, or not getting past, but getting my talk done for the Way of Leadership Conference success to significance and how when I spoke to Elijah last week or the week before whatever it was Elijah when we said like how can I take it and talk about leadership and the Enneagram but how can I fade it or bring it in and bring the hub in it went so smooth and so perfect but what it got me excited about was I introduced them to the conflict killer card we're going to send them that's a free gift they get an email with all the 30 cards 
and Elijah and I is going to help me create a video to talk to them about the training that we can do at the hub for the conflict parts. So it really brought back to me going how much we need to use. And like Christy just said, conflict came up, conflict came up for Terry. How we need to use the conflict cards more often within our own organization and with our own group. Because if we can't weed through that stuff, how are we going to evolve and help other people evolve, right? Because I am all about whoever's around us, we want to see them grow. So I can grab that. So you guys go ahead. So thank you, you guys. That was really awesome. I'll be right back. <laughs> and mine, um, I'm realizing that I don't know. So I, I, I really, I see the big picture, but I think there's a lot of little pieces that I don't know yet. So I don't know um, the um, choice map and I don't know the synergy map really well and the harmony map. So I'm, I'm feeling, I, I see pieces and I really want to bring all those together and utilize all of that more. So that's what's been on my mind is I need to do this. I want to learn this. I want to do that. Okay. What's Lori doing? Um, she just had a notary pop in. Okay. Okay. Uh, there was something I wanted to discuss um, and I brought it up with Sylvia and I, I, I have a tendency to <laughs> to bring up a major thing in the middle of Facebook on some random post suggesting something that of course probably doesn't have any buy-in from anybody and then hoping that it happens and it doesn't happen and then I forget about it. So that's not probably the best way to do things. So <laughs> um, I was thinking about the Remedy Oracle and I mean, essentially the, the core you know, at, at the core of almost all of this stuff is just teaching people to think in conversation types, values, and, and lenses, right? I mean, that's that's the thesis of these cards. And I know you don't all have your own card set yet, that we need to get each of you a card set sort of as soon as possible. I am working on that. Um, because that's, again, you kind of look at, like, there's so many things, but what's the core reference point? And then what is the core kind of, like, value that's happening? And so the, the remedy online... Uh, by asking the question and then coming up with the, the answer, it really helps to get a group to figure things out, right? Just as you see in the hub factor in, in offline space. And I was wondering um, if it was possible or if it was like as a, as a teaching practice, if each day one of you, and you did a sort of cycle of the four of you, use the Remedy Oracle asked a question, put it in the visionary hub, and then at least the four of you attempt to answer it as a daily practice, just to get in the rhythm of it and to, to see, you know, how each of you comes with a different perspective and just to start, start to train, but also start to get the online um, part yeah. going. And maybe you could start to invite people like friends who are like closer friends, like real allies who really want to participate invite them onto that stream and say, every day we're going to do a question. Would you like to participate? Now I'm wondering, is this a good idea? And if you would like to commit to doing this or is that kind of too much? Is that something that um, we can do amongst ourselves a couple of times and then bring it live on Facebook and create that engagement and get more of an audience? Um, I, th well, I, Okay, I was thinking just on the written side to start. I mean, it, it could be, I think it would be great for the four of you to go inside and ask questions and, uh, and do it by yourselves and just have it as a bit of a show. I mean, that by itself, if you did, let's say once a week or something, I think could be very interesting. But I'm just wondering about more from the writ written side mm -hmm. of, and getting into the habit of like, one of you doing like in cycles of four, right? Cycles of four. And what do you so feedback? If, if I um, I just want to explain it the way I'm understanding what you're saying. 
So we would use that remedy oracle that we have access to that's private right now. And we'd ask the question. And then of course it would give the answer. We'd take a screenshot of that and post it on the Visionary Hub's Facebook page. And then as individuals, talk about what comes up and each of us would take so it always would be we do basically in every eight days we each do two but our, our responsibility would be ask, asking the question and then making sure we explain the cards that come up and if other members want to is that am I understanding what you're suggesting yeah okay so that is going on the public Facebook page okay just the post Makes, that makes sense. Yeah, that's totally doable for me, and I like that. Um, and I think I think it's a really powerful suggestion, simply because it's an easy way for people to get to know us and our style of how we communicate and what we're talking about and stuff like that. The one thing I logistically with, yeah. So we would have to share. The post through the visionary hub but if you're an admin you'd have to see the post on your personal feed to comment right because otherwise your comment or are you thinking commenting is the admin under the visionary hub well are the four of you admins on the visionary hub yeah yeah okay yeah um yeah just ju yeah just post like whoever asked the question posts it and then in the comments below um each of you Put your answer and then whoever and, and 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 i think like again to build community or to build people like i know there's people that really support what you're doing and yeah. this and, and they want to get training they want to understand this would just be a simple way that doesn't cost anything for them to start to participate in in such a thing so we could tag those people in the comments or the post when we're putting it up because then it would show up for sure. I think that's a great idea. I think we should try posting at different times a day to really see kind of the analytics of when we're getting. So if it was first thing in the morning and then maybe around 11, 12 o'clock after in the evening and we just each kind of pick our day, you know, like in order we're going to do it and then we pick and then we have the time so we can kind of gauge where we're getting the most participation. Love that. Yeah. I have um, a couple of things I was thinking as you're speaking, um, just from like a teaching learning perspective, I think what we might want to do is do a week or two ourselves before we go live. So it's just like a gradual release where we kind of learn and know our styles and, and how we would respond and how that question might impact us. So maybe we do you know, a practice of the four of us for a week or two. And then I'd like to see like a, a sort of a schedule like in conjunction with what Christy was saying is like, okay, now for this week on like how many days are we doing this? Once a week, what day on this oh, week? Every day. every day. Every day. So then every day, what time? Okay. Yeah. I'll map it out for the month because what I'm finding is we come up with ideas, but then they're a little bit on the fly, and then it's like, oh, well, we'll just do it, which is great, but I like to have the map. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Streamline. Yeah. So, so I like the idea of being together. I think like for the three of us, we've probably done this process now 40 times with people, but Carrie, you haven't been there, so it would be newer for you. Right. So um, or are you thinking so that our terminology would match more in line with the language we want for the visionary hub? I'm thinking both because, yes, I'm a little bit removed from when you guys do it. But I'm also finding in our yeah, our language needs to be um, kosher. Like I'm finding we had that issue before and now it's kind of coming up again where we're not always on the same language yeah. premise and then the, what goes out into the world is not congruent mm -hmm. yeah I think that would be helpful for me because i'm pro I, I will admittedly say like the grammar and those bits and pieces will be my biggest challenge um you know and i don't always catch it or see it so i am happy to adapt the language and the way we speak i don't know that as a group we've determined those absolute essential things that we always need to hit on or how we're referring to things so I think it's just bringing up that fact and and in one of our group sessions on Tuesday that actually came out out is like okay we didn't have a lot of people so we kind of asked each of us asked 
four questions in relation to the hub, what really came forth was let's dial down what we're doing so we can focus in on the select few things, the hub factor being one. But I think we, you know, we've been short on group planning for a lot of stuff. So I think we're due for some group sessions like I led with Lori and Sylvia, but with the four of us to really flesh out those things because I think they're essential. So can we start them? Because I'm like, just let's do it. But let's do it, like Carrie said, on just Messenger. The four of us, we can yeah. do it through a Messenger system for a week or so, and then get the feel and the flow of it. And then we can take it live onto our Facebook. Yeah, I, was, like, I wasn't thinking like live because it's just writing. I'm not thinking just oh. live and video. I mean, I think, I think probably that should be done once a week. I think yeah. that'd be a great thing to so do. So I think she means live as in to the external world. So others can see it and interact with it as opposed to a live video. I get you. I, I think my, my guess is, I don't know, I could be wrong, but your visionary hub doesn't really have a lot of action, does it? No. So I don't, I wouldn't worry about going live or being seen because it's, 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 you haven't got the, the public viewing it yet. Mm -hmm. um, so then let's do this Carrie do you want to make the schedule like or here no who has what's a better time for everybody oh you have a schedule <laughs> would I like to make a schedule sure I would <laughs> but I'm just thinking like okay maybe we do it this way right like, like, like let's just who's gonna go first like and I don't mind going first or if you Lori want to go first or like, let's just start it because I know that I, I hear what you're saying, Carrie, that we need to make sure there's some consistency, but I also hear Elijah's point of view that if we wait too long, who knows when that all is going to happen. So we're better to do something because all four of us can go. So let's just pick who goes first and maybe they always do it the same, like whichever, let's just decide now. So it's done. Okay. I'll do morning. So I, I could do so every day time? morning. What time? We, um, only, we only are doing once a day. Yeah, once a day for the whole team, you switch it. Like it, it might, I mean, oh. it start, Kirsty, if you want to start, you can go um, like the builder, promoter, designer, organizer and go around like that way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. So you always yeah. know. Mm -hmm. So Christy starts and then... Uh, Lori, then Carrie, then Sylvia. Okay, so I'll start tomorrow. Um, and yeah. And, and, then, and then I was thinking like, perhaps if you had, let's say uh, a theme of the week. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. That kind of blends into like, then you, it's fun to maybe look at, you know, the, the next 52 weeks and go, let's have a theme for the week. And uh, you can connect it to the holidays, you can connect it to different things. I mean, I don't know if that, that's a, a kind of a big thing to do, but I think it could be pretty fun. Elijah, were you a fly on the wall in our last week at the hub? Because these two things are almost exactly what we were talking about is like when we sit down to the table to help people think through their questions, we kind of came up with four areas, finances, um, it's employment, but career is what we were talking about, relationships, and communication maybe I don't I can't remember the other one so it's almost like you were a fly on the wall there with those two suggestions <laughs> well I would imagine that the amount of synchronicity and sort of telepathy that the idea is that when you have the same common reference point same values that your telepathy and synchronized synchronicity is going to really increase that's kind of scary for everyone here I'm sorry I don't know if you want to get stuck inside my head <laughs> Hey, can I, is, I just have a, maybe a difficult question. Um, I just want to, because I think it's so pertinent. Um, is everyone not getting vaxxed or what, what's everyone's things on the vaccination? I'm not. I'm not. Is anyone getting vaxxed? I might. I'm, I'm not. I, f I feel like it's too soon for me to decide. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm just thinking that from a, practical point of view in the future, there's going to be a distinction between people that are vaxxed and people that aren't. Is there ever? And, and I think that 
you know, it's, it's a very, you got to play this one very carefully, right? In terms of the public opinion and sort of, I know I'm a bit of a rebel, but uh, I, I've seen how setting up as a rebel doesn't really do well in the, in the, in the, in the normal public life. So it's, it's, I know you guys are a lot more aware and uh, cognizant of that. But I just wanted to see just because I think when inviting people at some point, it's, it's gonna be an underlying factor whether people say so or not. It has like, it has come up just even when we were doing one of our table discussions that someone was talking about COVID and all that stuff. So it has appeared when we've done it. And so I think it's just something that's out out there and I, I honestly think personally it's your choice what you choose to do I'm not big on being overly political to people about my choices and stuff like that but um, not because I'm afraid of them I just think there's so many other things I can have a conversation with you about if it's just going to stir up animosity why bother I agree I agree like Mother Teresa says I will not I will I will not fight for war I will not protest war but I will walk for peace kind of means the same thing, but you're keeping it in more of a peaceful way. Yeah, I agree. I'm exactly where you are, Christy. I don't need to be there protesting and defending anything. I have my own way that I want to do things. And I'm really getting the hassle from the lake. <laughs> They're asking me for my vaccination card. I go, oh my God. And I just wait, are they? Anyway, I, I don't want to go into a big discussion on this because it's a massive discussion. Yeah, uh, not but I just wanted to bring up because I know like if there was two and two or, or you know, that's, that's a major thing if we never talk about it as a convo killer. <laughs> you know, okay, okay. I, I just want to, we don't have much time. So I just want to go to an exercise. Can, yeah. you, can you all get a piece of paper out? Yeah. So yeah. did you get this? Did everyone get this map that's behind me? Yeah. Yes. Through, through Facebook. Are you guys, are you guys, um, so I remember you sent something that was really good quite a while ago and I think Christy you're the only person who commented and it was actually a sequence of maps that I I just in the moment saw and then I I brought you guys in and tagged you but I, I forgot about it afterwards and and I don't think anything happened and I just wondered about some because I I in the moment kind of get these oh wow this is a great idea I'll send this to <laughs> to them and it, it it may be overwhelming or maybe out of context and I'm just Wondering if you guys check Facebook must when I tag you kind of thing. Oh, I love it when you, uh, the stuff you've been posting, Elijah, it is like amazing because I've been on here for a very long time with you and the stuff that's coming forward and the way it's being done is so good. Okay. I see it if you tag me. I'm not on, like, my days are so busy that I'm not on Facebook till probably the end of the day for me. So this is kind of how I run my world. If like, if you ask me to do something with it, say this is a map, I think, and, I, and I'm not saying you didn't say this, but if, if you say at Christy, me being the builder and you say, this is a map we need to work on, then I go, okay, this is a map. I'm going to take note of it. I'm going to bring it back to the team and I'm going to ask about it. Okay. But if you just say, hey, this is kind of a cool map. What are your thoughts? I then I may comment. I may, you know, but okay. if you actually want, if you're actually thinking like, yes, we should incorporate this and yes, it should be pulled forward. If it's on Facebook, if you send it to me in Messenger, you're more likely to get a quicker response because I see that. But if you actually ask me to do something, then I'm going to do it. Okay. Um, Can we start? Yes. <laughs> okay. So essentially, at 2.5, at at gifts and products on the flow wheel, right? And one of the big things about the inflow matrix is that the number that you're at, so at 2.5, you're at 5. All of the models have five pieces. If you're at 2.7, all of the models have seven pieces. If you're at 2.8, all the models have eight pieces. Now, this is a very distinguished thing about this as an operating system because it goes into numerology. And then what you can do is you can, when you get different models, you can stack them. You can layer them because they always fit because you're using the same number. And so this is something I haven't seen really anywhere else, but it's just something to kind of know, like at 2.6, everything around relationships is divided by six. And if you look at a, a tetrahedron, where you have a point, 
a line uh, and you triangle, then the fourth point's the tetrahedron. There are six lines that connect that tetrahedron to four pieces. So that's like six is relationship. So sometimes in the math, there's an actual reason why six, because the basic platonic solid is the tetrahedron. And what we're doing is we're looking at how to put language on sacred geometry. Okay. So, so the relationships between them come that way. So right now, the map behind me is a five map. So like this is looking at your five creative outputs. Now this can be very powerful because we have a lot of different sort of areas in our life. But what I want you to do right now is write down, if you were to choose five creative output areas, which would they be? And this is gonna be your breakdown again at 2.5 for your, for your products. Okay, so when you say like output, are you talking like, I like to make succulents, so that would be an output? Or yeah. it might be like that might be food to try to think of big categories at the top. They're, these are macro categories that are sort of you're looking to organize your life. So like writing, painting, like mosaic work. Yeah, but that okay. all that might all be artistic expression. And then you might have business expression. So you're kind of like what I did right here. Right. I mean, I have commerce. Yeah. Bottom. And that commerce, then I divide by the School of Conscious Communication and Paradigm Toolkit, the Inflow Matrix, Very Secret Plan, and um, Planetary Guardians. So that five, like it's a fractal five. Or Any one of the five here. breaks oh, down into five. five. So that's another mm -hmm. thing about the inflow is you're learning how to think in fractals. Because as soon as you go into one concept at the next level, it's a game five again. And it's teaching the mind to organize in fractals. And so we're, we're talking personal creative outlets. Yeah. Okay. So if I, I got yardening, I love yardening. I'm creating a um, medicine wheel yeah. type of thing. So that would just be yardening, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we want generic categories like gardening? Yeah. I mean, essentially, you're looking at if you had five boxes and you had to you only had five boxes and, and you had so to like for me, marketing could yeah. be one. Yeah. And then like for me, artistic expression, cause there's a lot of ways that I pull stuff into that. Well, I mean, even like, let's say if I was going to guess, I mean, you've got your mortgage broker. Cause sometimes you can look at it from a point of view of a role. So you might have your mortgage broker. You might have your coach through the hub factor. You might have your, artistic expressions and you might have family expressions and you might have health expressions like hey yeah Hey, do you want to go first, Chris? Okay, so I have entrepreneurial, coaching slash teaching, faith, family, and artistic expression. Well, 
What was the second one again? Poaching, teaching. Okay. And which one would you put in the center? That I would want to do all the time. Well, it's more, or it's more the center point. It's like the, the primary reference point is the center. That's a very tough question. I don't know. Because I had one, one client who we made this map and then she changed just the position and put like dancing in the middle before and her whole life changed completely. Cool. It's almost like the prime focus point. Ooh, cool. So I guess for me, coaching and teaching would probably be where I would put in the middle. Okay. Okay. Uh, Carrie? Oh, I've really had too many. <laughs> Hard, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had one is writing. Um, then another area of like production slash show mm -hmm. coaching and teaching and then this kind of almost does go back to the production piece but I had like choreography so the visual the dance the music that kind of feeling piece and then of course I slash everything so I can get two things in with one <laughs> um, public speaking slash spiritual yeah. Profit. <laughs> it's a good combination. And of course, I have more than five. So those would be where I'd probably stop. <laughs> okay. Uh, have, are, are some of those you're not doing right now? or? or um, maybe not. Some of them not as much as normally. Okay. Okay, Sylvia. Okay. So um, I put designing. So when I say designing, it's like crafting, sewing, embroidery, uh, that type of design. And like digital design too. So I, I love putting like kind of graphics and stuff like that together. Um, the second one is kind of like nature. So whether it's Herbert. Um, doing some herbs, earthing, foraging, um, wood landing, that, that type of thing. Um, third one is family. The fourth one is like spiritual, spiritual growth. And the last one is like self growth. Is what? What? Self growth? Yeah. Okay, okay Lori. So I put designing, taking something that's kind of out there already, but kind of giving it a twist to it to make it different. Um, gardening, I love. So being in nature, working in my yard, designing. Money, working with people around simplifying their mindset around money. Um, gardening, oh, I put gardening twice. Des uh, designing, spending time with people. So I put coaching, the Enneagram. So I really specified my coaching. Okay. And then development in the center okay sylvia what would what would your center point one be um, I, I think it would be design so like really that handcraft theme okay and carrie what's yours you're gonna ask that <laughs> i that's a tough one mm -hmm. i i don't know that i can pick like i have three that are like hmm so when he said to me, well, when someone switched it and moved dance to the middle, I thought, okay, looking at these things, if I'm going to pick where I'm going to focus and things are going to flow through, that's how I'm going to pick the middle. It might be 35% of my time, but then if I'm switching my focus to have all things flowing through, that's kind of how I. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So which one do you choose? Still no answer. <laughs> Carrie, what was your fifth one? I had to run and answer the lawyer's phone. Uh, public speaking and spiritual. And spiritual, okay. Okay, perfect. What's the one that you can do them all in or from? That's 
you know, that's what I said too, because everything you do has such spirit, right? When you're coaching, you really put yeah. your heart and soul into it. When, when you're, you're writing, writing, yes. Your spirit just illuminates through that carry. Really that's all thoughts. <laughs> if we can get our two cents for <laughs> So you have coaching and teaching from that aspect, right? Like, because you're, but just different, right? Like, yeah. So Kara, are you going to abstain? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to let that one. Okay. 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 So now if you look behind me, I, oh God, this stupid zoom, it cuts off the top, cuts off the bottom. So we actually got it on our Facebook group. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is again, once the software is done, you'll be programming this. And then if you click on the concept, you would go into the next level and you, and it would sort of organize, but it, it isn't doing this on the bottom, right? There's the people. Mm -hmm. Where am I? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The stories, the bottom right are the character. Yeah. Part. yeah. The characters. And yeah. then to the left of the team, Okay. And that's, and then the top left is stories and the top right is the vault. So the vault at some point is going to be, you're going to have a vault, then you have a team vault, and then you have a community vault. And that's oh. where you start to gather all the things of value. That's where you start to have wow. the paradigm toolkit. And then you start to sort of look at what are we collecting? Because there's so, so much value out there. All you have to do is create a, a, a container and a boundary around it. And it becomes a lot more valuable when you organize it, right? It's kind of like knowledge harvesting. So the idea of the vault is you start to create all the things of value that you have. You start to create all the, that, that just you access and you can give other people access to, but this is kind of like yours. Then you have the team vault, which is your stuff, the four of you. What are you collecting and, and, and what are you building together? And then you have the shared knowledge community vault where you have the big access again, like, so you'd have the whole thing in the future is not going to be ownership. It's going to be access. You got it. Wow. Oh, and then on the left, the top left, you have stories. Yeah. And it's kind of like at some point you're going to make a card set. That's going to be a story card set. That's going to be kind of like how you guys are going to proceed to where you want to go. What are all the events that took place? What are all the little stories? What are all the things that happened? And you can make an actual card set around this. That's part of the game that we're going to be creating. Mm. But it's just like people thinking stories, right? Mm -hmm. So we really have to take advantage of the whole idea of what is your story? Where are you going? You are the characters in your story. You are the first team. And then Think in terms of attracting other teams of four. People, like, if they come in as individuals, it's pretty tough. But you come in as a team, and there's four of you, look what happens with you guys, right? It's, there's a lot, a lot of dynamics that occur in terms of communication and everything that you have to go through to be a team. So, I mean, people can come in as an individual, but you're looking to team people up because you have 12 teams of 12, each one of those is three teams of four. Mm -hmm. You might not bring 12 in, but you can bring in four. And what I do is I have tables. I have a two table, a three table, a four table, a five table, a six table, an eight table, two nine tables, and a 12 table other than what you have. Mm -hmm. So I'm just starting to digitize the synergizer, which is six people, which is a lot easier to sit at. When you get six people around that, it's really tight. The 12, 12 is a lot, right? Like it's, it's tough to get through uh, 12 people in two hours anyway. Probably eight is probably the maximum really that you're going to get in terms of something really working well. But maybe, have you guys, you guys haven't done 12 yet, have you? 12 at a hub factor? No. Have you, okay, another thing about the hub factor, one thing about your spells, are you, I, I, I went through a little bit of things with Lori and I'm not sure if she passed them on, but do you guys have like a three ring binder? And every time that you have a spell that you capture it and use one of the sheets and you put it in that three ring binder. Are you guys doing that? No, because we really haven't, we haven't utilized the online concept except for when Christy did it. Okay, well, 
but I'm saying like for the hub factors that you've been doing. So what we've done so far, Elijah, we've just taken the cards that people like the questions on and stuff, and they're in a little box for now. Okay. That's the stuff. So they're here, okay. and the sheets people take home with them. But oh, it's too similar. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So the people take home that you you have the the nice thing printed, and they they fill it out. That's what they take home. Okay. Now you guys individually are doing the hub factor sometimes, or you're not. We are. We are. Okay, so I would say like, just, just from a matter of personal research, I would just suggest to write it on that nice piece of paper and put it into a three ring binder and start to collect them and date them. That's I would a really good suggest idea. that as a protocol. Yeah. I wish I had done that. <laughs> I know. Because there's a lot of things in terms of research I wish I'd done a lot better. Um, yeah, but it's okay. We will now, Elijah, going forward, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so and we did take pictures when we yeah. did it with the question so we do have a record of it of what parts came up because we typically always take a picture yeah. and for ourselves all of us do and then we have the actual card so in theory we can make a digital album of it true um if you wanted you could use those two and backtrack and figure out what your things were and, and start the process with what you have i just think that the best way to sort of share this is through the experience of what happens and sometimes these spells like this like you see down the road you see oh that's what it meant oh that's what happened mm -hmm. and so when you have a sort of more of a record of it you can go oh i remember asking that question but if you don't and now there's 20 spells that have gone and you don't know which ones went where like Believe me, I understand what living in chaos is, and it's. I don't want to pass on my bad habits to you. <laughs> yeah. So we've got pictures, and the we last time, Elijah, what we did is because of the amount of people we had, each of us, we did every spot. So Sylvia did all four, I did all four, Christy did all four spots, oh, wow. and then our guests did two each. So we did have 12, and that was over a <laughs> Holy cow. So that's, that's a lot of uh, information, isn't it? Yeah, I was exhausted. It's, yeah. it's, you know what I find when you get more than six people doing it, and, and you're really speaking to what comes up, I am just wiped out because there's a lot of energy and things that happen. So it's one of those things that we kind of made a decision when we had our first one with lots of people after a couple that we really only wanted to have four guests, maybe six, just because there's, it is so exhausting right now. Yeah. I get it. I, I understand. And that's, I'm trying to get, I'm going to get you the synergizer hopefully as quickly as possible which again, six, six, so one person with five or, or whatever, but it's a lot smaller and you're right. I mean, okay. it, it can be very tiring depending on the energy of the people. So, and I would, I don't know if you did that set intention, like huddle beforehand, say a bit of a prayer and set an intention ahead of time. We, we try to, but we didn't, we haven't the last couple of times. Okay. I, that's again, I guess I, I should write down a, a set of protocols. Um, because I think that will help in terms of getting the energy feel ready for what occurs. We do usually, we do, I think pretty well every time do a pause at the table before we begin the process. Okay. So that's with everybody. Okay. Yeah. That's just, I, yeah, just to bring the energy together for the facilitators that are there. Um, and I don't know if you guys use crystals, no, but you can, haven't. It's, it's fun to bring in crystals and you can put crystals on the table and that kind of can help things depending on the people and uh, <clears throat> maybe not the guys, but. I think what it is for me is there, I give out a lot of energy when I do this because um, like the last time we did it, my whole right side of my body, I went home and I was numb, like my right arm because there was so for, much for me that I was giving out because I get that quite a bit. Uh. Um, but I just find like there's a lot of energy that goes out when I do it because I typically will have a thought or a word based on someone's card if they don't know. Well, I'm sure you're all very intuitive in terms of that. I would suggest, again, part of that beforehand is sort of stabilizing the field and sort of setting maybe more of a stronger energetic boundary around not doing that. I think that's another mistake I've made because I felt very tired after doing a lot of these things afterwards where 
like the, you got to sort of this the team synergy it, you it creates i think more of a protection layer for you Allow the people to speak their truth and their words instead of feeling we have to fill in the blanks for them immediately mm. is uh, some of the comments that we're getting from some of the people is just allowing them to flow too much. yeah okay yeah now, do you guys have any feedback for me? We got ten minutes left in terms of the second uh, module. Do you have feedback in terms of what you like, what you don't like, what what you need, what you're not getting, kind of thing? I missed the information on the team cards and the character cards. Okay, I, I don't. Oh, you mean just now? Mm -hmm. Team cards are the four of us together. And then bringing other teams together. Yeah. I don't know what the character is. No, uh, yeah, I totally missed that. I'm sorry. Well, just that kind of like I think one of the, the, if you're looking at your sweet spots, you're looking at, you know, sort of primary things, I think is making teams and sort of du duplicating what you guys have in terms of the four mm -hmm. and bringing teams of four together because that's, that's what people are missing the masterminds. We're missing the, the connection and to me if you can bring a team together and have that type of connection that yeah. self-growth and personal development can happen that's what people really want and need we didn't talk about that we talked about going out to organizations in different places saying you guys come to us right we have talked about that so that people from different organizations can come but as a group mm -hmm. um so, something i want to share last night i had this uh a discuss well, not a discussion, it was a download from him from a professor in Hong Kong called Gino, who introduced me to Le Ciel, and he's like a master global networker. And he's, he, he formulated his life work, and he was basically looking at, you know, you've got the status quo of where people are at, and then you've got people who are an artist or an inventor or an originator or whoever it is, and they, they there's two paths. There's a path of people going with the status quo, and there's a the people who don't. And the people who go for in the status quo, but then have some have a, sort of like a breakdown, that's when they wake up. And then people who are going on the other path push it too hard or really have a huge spiritual experience and they sort of break down. And so both people are breaking down. And then you have to go through a period of your your sort of you lose a lot of everything around you. And then you have to find a way to stabilize, and then you have to find a way to make a living because you can't do it the normal way that you did. And so he basically was outlining, I think, what could be your prime target market, in a sense, mm -hmm. of people who can't fit in the old system. Mm -hmm. people, people who the only way out is through an entrepreneurial path. Mm -hmm. And he's, oh. he's brilliant the way he sort of showed it because it's just something I've gone through it. I don't know to an extent you guys have, but I'm sure you probably have in, in your own way. And, you know, there's young people, there's old people, there's tons of people out there that you don't even know about that can't fit anymore, have nowhere to go. And to yeah. me, that's where like, you guys are like the, the shining lighthouse. Mm -hmm. but you gotta, but you gotta be careful in terms of how you position like visionary hub is just such a perfect name because it's, it's very neutral, right? It's it's not like within some spiritual domain where people automatically um, yeah. put it as a cult, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. So I'll say I asked him for the paper, but he had, he said I. But I'll send it to you. Uh, we did do a, a podcast of it, so I could send that to you too, because um, he very clearly outlines it in terms of the just just the kind of like another map of the territory that mm -hmm. shows the the movement of i think what will happen of coming through the visionary hub of, oh. and then identifying you know oh this is another piece i didn't i didn't finish the questionnaire because i got stuck at because i know it was it was put at okay there's going to be the visionary someone who wants help with the vision and someone who wants help with self-development and then branching it into the two and then having the two threads. And I kind of, I started and then I kind of got lost a bit in terms of, I couldn't distinguish the the two threads because I, I, I guess I still kept the one thread in my mind. And so I thought I didn't want to put a whole bunch of time and effort and waste money 
doing that when maybe you guys could do it. So I was wondering maybe if Christy, you wanted to do it to finish it in a way that fits. No, I think we can all have a piece in that because we talked about it this morning as well. We go, when people do a questionnaire, what do we want to know? Those two things, vision or self growth, or do we want to have an area of their life that we want to touch on? Because, you know, last night we worked with the Habitat families and we did the circle and they had to put the circle around on where they were from one to 10 in the different areas of their life, right? And we did that a few years ago as well. And then that gives people direction on, oh my gosh, I'm not spending the time that I want in this area of my life. So that's where they want the attention. So we weren't sure if that's how we wanted to guide it or if we wanted it to guide to which of the four of us can kind of start with them with this, what's going on for them. Like, okay. That's my thought on that survey. So I think each of you is an editor on it right now, right? So, so if I just put it in your hands, is that fine or do you? I think that's fine, hey? I mean, even if we look at it when we're all together at the end of May, unless we get to it sooner. So it's like for the questions. Well, just, just, just to, to have, because it's, it's a very important thing, I think in terms of the whole marketing campaign, it needs to get done, but I, I just, I don't think I'm the person to finish it because I think you guys have to, sort of hold it and own it and have all the parts that you want. Okay. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. So do you want to um, talk a bit about going back into our one-on-one -on -one coaching and just maybe confirm dates and time? Sure. Um, Carrie, you were saying you wanted to go to the Monday slot? I mean, I might as well know that, that I've ruined the flow on Thursdays. <laughs> so did I on Wednesday. <laughs> so Monday at 11 my time? That's 12 my time, yes. Okay. Okay, Kirsty? Kirsty. Yeah, I don't know because I have, as long as we're not late, because I have a, a call with the client at every Thursday at 12 o'clock now. Okay. But we're meeting on Wednesday or Thursday? Thursday, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, as long as, like, oh, I'm just wondering for myself if that'll be too tight. I can make it, like, I can end it right on time. No, but it's, we're a little bit early. I you just, want... oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I just, because I always need time before I meet with my client. So, I just need to think about it. So, pick a time. You can let but, know. Lori, last time we were together, you said we don't need the individual. We were just going to do the group. So what changed? So we're going to do four individual, like we're going to do individual. But what was I kind of mentioned was, I think these groups are important too to pull us all together from our individual sessions. Okay. I thought. And then Elijah comes in, say on the we do a session or two sessions and then Elijah comes in and then we kind of summarize everything because he's hearing everybody individually. How can we bring it all together? That's what I, that's my thought. Okay. I, I can't pick a time right now. I need just to okay. think about it. If that's okay. I just, my week is getting fuller and busier and mortgage stuff is getting busier. So I need to just hammer that out of my schedule right now. Cause I'm not sure. Okay. Can I go on a Monday as well, Elijah, now? Sure. What time? Um, Carrie's on at 11. I can do 10. Okay. Oh, look out. <laughs> okay. Lori, 10. Sylvia? Um, I'm still good Thursday at 10 our time. Mm -hmm. So 9 o'clock my time. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> what about? Sure. Okay. 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 Uh, and also, I've been sending you the digital versions of the combo types sort of uh, slowly. Um, I didn't want to send them all at once, thinking it was a little too much. I, I mean, eight at a time might be too much still, but. Um... Yeah, I kind of agree, Elijah, because it does, it gets, it gets a little overwhelming. And especially when we're in, a, we're in such a kind of planning category. And, it, and when we did our hub the other day, there was a comment made, and this is cool, Carrie, it was Rhonda Rowe. 
she said it felt like we were just kind of here right now you know there wasn't a whole lot of movement and she says it's like a bow and arrow when you're pulling it back and you're focusing on the target and she actually went through the process i got shivers so it's like we're kind of in that let's pull this back but now let's look at it so it's just what's the target yeah what's the target and I do like the way Elijah said, for as far as people, people who can't fit into an old system are going to be attracted to us big time, just automatically, it's going to happen. Well, and the, there's like 100 million people out of work, kind of like there's, there's, there's a massive amount of people that are unemployed right now, right? And entrepreneurship down, um, Christy, was a big deal. You know, Lord, what's that? You put down entrepreneurship as one of your five. That's a big deal because Mike Stackos was here today and he says, I know if I lost my job at Source doing our signs, he said, nobody would hire me. And I go, you wouldn't freaking need anyone to hire you because you could create your own work. Oh, and you know, and that's for me, that's where I'm doing like almost all my coaching and consulting right now. Um, and Elijah, I'm going to start a mastermind for people who have come through the hub and have this idea, but need to actually just get it into action and talk more about it because it's been identified in the hub. And so I'm going to do it for five weeks and it's going to be $50 and no more than eight people and then pick a book that will all go through. So I just have to f figure out a date because of like the people who come, there's probably five or six already that would, would go to it and get benefit out of it. Awesome. Yeah. So to create a kind of a bit of a theme to it and why they want to be here. Sorry, Lori. And like picking a theme to what it's going to be. Like you said, you're looking for a book. Well, oh yeah, that'll come, right? Like for sure. Yeah. No, I know. I just, um, I think for me, if I know what day it's going to be and when I want to start it, then I work better with that deadline. And then we were like, again, just this conversation because Sylvia and I get to spend a lot of time together. We said, what if every one of us did some form of mastermind? Because it can be online, carry, or it could be in the space. Mm -hmm. So then we each take our skills and our gift and we create a mastermind. So then everybody's developing in what they want to bring forward and teach and embrace in the hub. Definitely. I mean, I strongly suggest that. Yeah. Well, I gotta show them my like, oh Eliza, what are afternoons like for you? Like what if we met before this session on Thursdays? Like one o'clock? Your time, yeah. I could do that. That would be easier because I'm already setting this time aside. And my other thing, it it's always over. So then that way I'm not feeling panicked in our meeting that I need to be prepared for the next one. Okay. So yeah, I could do Thursdays at two. Okay. My time, which is one year time. How, how is, how is your overall overwhelm factor? How, like it, right now. You're, you're at over. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll sort of hold, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll sort of calm down a bit and I, so I feel as if I'm not giving enough sometimes. So um. I just need the context. And, and so like when you talked about the seven steps with the crescendo, that was great for me. So I'm trying to visualize that map behind you and put it into everyday context to see it because it's very theoretical for me. And so I'm trying to switch my brain to like start seeing the everyday things that I do and stay fit into that. So that's why I'm overwhelmed. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're I mean, I'm coming in with theory like this and you're coming up from practicality here. So, I mean, I'm always going to irritate you like no degree, but. Well, it's not irritate. I'm just like, I just need to sit. I also wouldn't mind seeing Elijah. We've never done a synergy map with the four of us ever. And that's, that's an inner group. So if we can create a synergy map for us, I think that would give us some context for all okay. of us. Okay. And I, I had, because you and Sylvia did a synergy map, right? And I made it for you, yeah. and then I promptly lost it. I, I can't find it on my computer. That's why we need to do one of all four. Yeah. Right, because you got to get buy-in from everybody, right? Okay, so how about the next team meeting we'll do the synergy map? Because that's uh, that would be that's, awesome. That's a huge piece. Yeah. So 
just an FYI, we are all gathering together at the end of May, the 28th, I think it is, right, ladies? Mm -hmm. And like we can bring the cards, we can have all of that and actually physically do it together. Yeah. Yeah. That okay, that might be better to get your buy in. Um, yeah. We're all in the space together. So yeah. we just so, a lot of time that we're going to work with you and do our synergy map. Okay, so that's what days are that? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So 29, 30, 31, you guys are going to be together, all of you? 28, 28, and 29. We leave on the 30th. Okay, so that's fantastic. Yeah. Carrie, you're going to be there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Are, you where we're going. Day, Are you taking a half day on the Friday and we'll drive out together? Because we can check in at 10 on the 28th. Where are we checking in? Fort Sands. <laughs> it's a cabin we rented in Fort Sands. That's fantastic. You don't even have to worry about it, Carrie. She's driving. So you just be packed and ready by 10 and she'll pick you up. We're going to another planet. Yes. So should I just organize the food or are you guys doing that? Like, because why don't we um, do a Facebook chat? I, I can start a group and let's just chat about that. You and I. Yeah, because I was thinking I could hit Costco here and we could get some stuff that would be really easy to pop in the oven and stuff like that. So you and I can work on that together and we can just figure that out. And then we just have the stuff. <laughs> what? I'm good with that. <laughs> so Chris, you're starting tomorrow the, the remedy? Yes. And then tag me in there too, because I'll I'll participate too. Yeah. Okay. And and I would just suggest to all you like invite people to like it'd be great to have like every week it, it like it grows right with the amount of people that are participating if if you can. So we'll create our own separate little Facebook messenger group. Then is that what you're thinking? No, no, just do it in Visionary Hub. Okay, right on the hub, Facebook. Yeah. Okay, I thought we were doing a It just starts thing, getting so. into, no, we just said, let's do it. We don't okay. have a big following anyway, so but we don't have No, activity. no, we, I did think we were going to do a practice, but just in our messenger group, unless okay. I'm totally I, misunderstood. You no, know, I mean, you guys are fine. This is, this is, we're good. you don't need you to worry about the outside world seeing you at the beginning. You guys will do fine. and We're going to be authentic. Yes. That's why I'm going first because I kind of don't care if the outside world sees me and it, it doesn't go because you guys can just jump in <laughs> and support it. You guys are great. There's nothing to worry about. You guys are all brilliant women and that's it. I compared us to Steve Jobs. So here's my little vision board with the Habitat for Humanity family. So if you oh, see wow. here, it says proud to be part of the adventurers in Saskatchewan, Canada, heroes. And I put daring, lesson number one, two, three, and four, and there's Yorkton on the map. Oh, wow. And I put the mastermind, million dollar mastermind, and the four of us with the butterflies. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Possibilities and advice, steps and stages, but we have to laugh. And we want to explore. We did the habitat. We did, worked with the habitat families last night. So Sylvie and I did our boards. For the, so I don't know which butterfly who wants to be, but a bunch of dynamic women coming together as heroes in the province of Saskatchewan, Canada. And look what we're doing. Wow. So that was fun. And then get this though, grab yours. So Sylvia sees my $1 million and she had 500,000 cut out and she threw it away. But look at what she put. So we've got the world. We're going out into the world. It says, connect to your world. But look what she put. And then here. I have 24 million paid subscribers. <laughs> So I overed her her one million. I said, "Oh my God, pickin'. So, and, so there's okay, one dollar a membership, one dollar a, a, a membership, a subscriber. There's twenty four million bucks. Oh, and I'm thinking we're gonna be so valuable that they're gonna pay a thousand dollars. So it's not that we need twenty four million. I went the other way. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so yeah, so yeah. I mean, we post I, we posted these on our on our. Oh, but wasn't in there. Oh, and so yeah. So it's share, learn, inspire. We're creating connections, inspiration, illuminating, happiness, understanding, and balance. <laughs> yeah.
Those are awesome. Last night, just because we're going to sit there, we're not going to tell people what to do. We're going to engage with them. So it was kind of cool when Sylvia and I sat after and we kind of said why we put what we put on there because we let the families do their stuff and then they laughed and then we went through ours. <laughs> I put a million, she puts 24 million subscribers. <laughs> cool. Okay. okay, I think we're done. Thank okay, you. so everybody has their times for next week that they're meeting with Elijah. Yeah, okay. I got to put it in my phone right and, and we'll see you and Carrie at seven tonight. Yes. So we are you sending the link? I can, yeah, absolutely. And okay. do you have a bit of an agenda or anything? You have some stuff for an agenda. Well, yeah, let, you know, we can think about it. Let's throw stuff into our messenger chat. If we don't have an agenda, I can make sure that we get stuff done. Because okay. I have things in my head that I know we've been talking about. So um, but if you guys have stuff to bring forward, we can just go from there. Okay. And again, again, just any of you can, if you need feedback or to, to, you need help or any type of thing, just Facebook messaging me and I'll, uh, I try to get back ASAP, but I'm on full support for you guys in terms of what you need or want in terms of if you're just in a confusion or an overwhelm or any type of uh, negative situation, I definitely am here to be of support. Awesome. awesome. Can you just for that map behind you, can you maybe give me a real life example of it so I can just start putting my head into it? Like when you get a chance, not right now. I just need to digest it and I'm and that's where I'm feeling overwhelmed. So can you do that for me and send it to me a messenger or some suggestions? Okay. A real life example meaning you mean all you mean with the whole thing? Like the characters just, or the vault? Or yeah, just, just the five that we Sorry, say that again. Uh, do you mean the five parts or are you looking at like the stories, the vault, the characters and okay, that overwhelmed you. Okay. Okay, I got you. Yeah. That's all part of the very secret plan. But. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye ladies, I'll see you later. Bye, Bye later. Thank, Bye, you. Everyone. Thank okay. you. Bye. <laughs> okay, I'm going camping. <laughs>